Ladies and gentlemen, good morning, good afternoon, wherever you are. Today is Monday, October 17th, 2022, and it's time for Jordan Dove's Real Estate and Economic Market Pulse, where I'm going to give it to you guys straight, no fluff. I'm going to give you the data as it is so that you can make informed decisions. Okay. If you need an agent in Southern Nevada or anywhere in the country, I can get you a referral. And these are agents I would trust with my own family. My contact information will be in the description of this video. So feel free to shoot me a text, give me a call, send me an email. It's always great hearing from you guys. All right. So one thing I want to bring to your attention is that China indefinitely delays the release of their third quarter gross domestic product numbers. And my question is, how bad is it over there? What do they not want let getting out? How would that affect the global economy? How would it affect their economy? What will their people start doing? Because China's very controlled. And, you know, they continue shutting down for COVID restrictions. Macau is shut down, which is like the Las Vegas of Asia. Um, and I think this is something we really should be watching and paying attention to. China is having severe housing issues, developments overbuilt, not sold, vacant cities. You have the Evergrande, which could possibly collapse because they're defaulting on their debt, not making payments. That could get interesting. So look, we're going to keep you in the loop on what's going on with the Communist Party in China. They are keeping this hush-hush. They're not releasing the data. I want to know why. If you guys have any information on this, please leave links in the comments. Let me know what you guys are thinking is going on with China. I would appreciate it. All right, let's get into the review of what happened last week. Inflation, deflation, are we going to start seeing some signs of easing? What the hell is going on? And it does not appear that inflation is subsiding. The Fed, the stock markets, and the rest of us peasants are looking for a sign. Inflation is easing, but it did not come with September's higher than expected 8.2% Consumer Price Index Report, or the CPI, plus Core CPI, which excludes food and energy, rose to its highest level in 40 years. And the producer price index, the PPI, saw wholesale prices up 8.5%. That means things are still going to get more expensive. The S&P 500 and the NASDAQ ended the week deflated and the Dow had a modest gain. There was a flat September retail sales report which showed inflation has consumers trimming spending and the University of Michigan consumer sentiment posted higher inflation expectations, both pointing the finger to more aggressive rate hikes from our beloved Fed. <laughs> the week ended up with the Dow up 1.2%, the S&P 500 down 1.6%, and the NASDAQ down 3.1% to 10,321. Inflation-hating bonds also got hammered with the 30-year UMBS 5.5% down 0.99 to $98.09. And when you have lower bond prices, that means higher rates. So therefore, the national average 30-year fixed mortgage rate moved up in Freddie Mac's primary mortgage market survey. Rates are sitting about 7 and one eighths of a percentage point right now for Good credit, conventional, 10, 20% down. Remember, mortgage rates can be extremely volatile. I wish they had a VIX just for mortgage rates. But anyways, check with your mortgage professional for up-to-the-date information. Or you can always ask Chuck Barone. Ask Chuck Barone at gmail.com. Our inverted yield curve watch saw increases in all four of the yields from last week's reading with the 30, 10, 5, and 2-year treasury bonds all sitting above 4%. The two year sits the highest at 4.454%, which is inverted with the other three yields. The five year is at 4.232, the 10 at 4.002, which is just below the 30. So we do not have a traditional inverted curve yield this week where the two, five, 10, and 30 are inverted, but it's very close with the 30 year sitting at 4.014%. Let me ask you if you could get the same return on your money at two years versus 30 years, what would you do? Yeah, wouldn't lock my money up for 30 years to maturity. Anyway, moving into the Federal Reserve Watch where we are forecasting 
Federal Reserve policy changes in the coming months, and with little indication that inflation is abating, Wall Street expects the Fed will hike rates more aggressively, <laughs> more aggressively. It should have been one point from the get-go, but hey, now they're forecasting three quarters of the next FOMAC meeting in November, another three quarters of a rate hike in December with a half a point in February, which would put the overnight rate, if they go three quarters, three quarters, half, that would put the overnight rate at five to five and a quarter percent after the February 1st FOMAC meeting, which means borrowing money is going to get more expensive. National debt over $31 trillion. We're never going to pay it. They got to create more debt to service debt. It is a Ponzi scheme. It's exactly what it is. You know who pays the price for it? The middle class, guys. We pay, we pay for it, and it's really unfortunate that it's going to get really rough. So I hope you guys are saving your money. Keep your credit clean. There is going to be some opportunities. Please try to take advantage of those opportunities. I know it's hard when the cost of everything goes up and you got to use savings to offset. It's really difficult. But if you can keep that credit clean, there's going to be some opportunities. Now, let's get into our national housing market update for the week of October 17th, 2022. Realtor.com reports active inventory continued to grow in the week ending October 1st. That is 30% above one year ago although that's down it's still down from pre-pandemic levels on a national level homes spent six more days on the market than a year ago the median listing price grew by one 13.3 percent over last year new listings which is a measure of sellers putting homes up for sale that was down again dropping 17 percent from one year ago active inventory continued to grow increasing 30 percent above one year ago Fitch Ratings expects home prices to fall, but sees more of a correction rather than a crash, citing still constrained housing inventory and a strong job market and prudent lending standards. The Mortgage Bankers Association, or the MBA, not to be confused with the NBA, the news that job growth and wage growth continued in September is positive for the housing market as higher income support housing demand. Now, I know this is so cliche and it's very salesy, but people say all the time, well, I bought my first house at 10% or 12%. But yeah, your house was $75,000, $100,000. 7% at half a million dollars is a big substantial difference, especially when wages since 1982, the federal minimum wage, 375 an hour in 1982 to 750 an hour federally today. And that's only double the amount in, I don't know, 30 years. Whereas the prices of everything have increased at least fourfold. So double the wages, but everything costs four times as much. Think about that, wrap your head around it. And then what happens when they raise the wages, now the businesses are just gonna pass it on to the consumer again. And is it really a wage increase if the cost of everything keeps going up again? It's really shitty. But hey, did you know existing home sales have been forecast at 5.15 million in the year 2022? That's down 15.8% from 2021's 15 year high, but compared to the average existing home sales of the eight years before the pandemic, which was 2012 to 2019, 2022 is only down nine tenths of a percent, that's 0.9%, okay? Let's talk about the Southern Nevada housing market, which is where I practice real estate with my team. We'd love to help you guys. If you need a consultation, if you wanna do a Zoom meeting, a phone call, come to the office, whatever, go to my website, jordandub.com, click book appointment or schedule a consultation, and you can schedule that with me or somebody on my team directly. We would love to help you. So, back to Southern Nevada where we practice real estate, there was a big county commission vote on Coyote Springs. Coyote Springs is a 575 home subdivision, about 60 minutes from Las Vegas, but it hasn't been developed yet. The development actually sits on a Jack Nicklaus designed par 72 golf course. Uh, the, the lots are graded, everything was there, the electricity is there, it's ready to be developed but it got shut down last week as the county commission voted 7-0 to deny the subdivision map 
which was a block in the step of the development process that's needed to enable home construction. The Las Vegas Valley Water District had objected to the map, not because our water levels at Lake Niederlow, but because there is a rare warm water fish called the Moapa Dace, D-A-C-E, in which the water rights could harm this species of fish, so it got shut down okay the developers are likely to refile an application for the subdivision map uh, for this project that's been going on two decades it was all ready to go and start construction back before 2008 and then the money dried up and we all know what happened so i actually played golf out there not too long ago beautiful course 60 minutes away um, in uh, from north of las vegas 60 minute drive 50 depending on how quickly you drive and a beautiful golf course Jack Nicholas designed the, the the grading the lots are all there now you got weeds growing but that housing you know I would like to see more suburban developments outside of Las Vegas Henderson, and North Las Vegas I think that'd be really cool to see if people actually wanted to live there anyways let's discuss some housing statistics the Clark County absorption rate is 21.22 percent for the past four weeks with a total of 11,427 properties on the market with 2,425 sales during the same time period this marks a decrease um, for this week and that is 14 out of the last 17 readings we've had a decrease in the absorption rate um, a market with an absorption rate at or above 20 percent is typically called a seller's market whereas an absorption rate below 15 percent signals a buyer's market moving into our median prices for october which we follow every week keep in mind the majority of homes sell at the end of the month so we will have the actual median numbers at the first Monday of each month for the previous month once all that data comes in but we track it every week because we want to have a better understanding where the markets going what's moving where are we headed what are the trends what are the directions so I have that information to educate my clients and to make decisions for myself as well okay so single-family homes are down fifty five hundred dollars from September to four hundred forty four thousand five hundred condos are down to 226 that's down from 230 in September but townhomes are up four thousand nine hundred and fifty dollars so far in October to three hundred twenty four thousand nine hundred fifty dollars and it's my professional opinion that there will be decreases in median prices over the next several months we're seeing a lot of sellers take homes off the market and turning those into rentals or just deciding to stay we do have clients who are moving out of state um, distress sales divorce probate stuff like that those people are looking to sell but you know, why are you gonna why are you gonna sell your house and pay double the rate that you have you know it just doesn't make sense for a lot of people some people it does now this week shows a slight rise in inventory the past 29 of 30 weeks we have seen an increase of available inventory we currently have 8,600 and eight single family homes on the market, 1144 condominiums, 799 townhomes, 324 manufactured homes, 453 high rise units, and 99 multiple dwellings on the market without a contingent offer accepted. Now, the amount of new listings were down this week to 909 new listings, a reduction of 13.43% compared to one month ago. There were 1,677 price decreases, 609 properties accepted an offer, and 541 sold, which was down 12.60% from this time one month ago. All right, that's our housing market. Let's give you the weekly tip. And this week's weekly housing tip is for you first time home buyers. If you've never bought a home before, let me know in the comments. If you're looking to buy your first home in today's housing market, you'll want to know what you can do as mortgage rates rise and inventory is still low overall. Here are a few tips for you to keep in mind. Number one, get pre-approved, very important. Due to rates climbing, that impacts what you can comfortably afford. Number two, prioritize your wish, wish list. Make a list of your desired features and prioritize which are nice to have and what are essential. Review it with your agent, me, before looking at homes. 
You know, if you have a budget of $200,000, you're probably not gonna get an infinity edge pool. But if you buy a house with me at $200,000, I will buy you a blow up inflatable kiddie pool that you can have the water run off the side with the hose running. That could be your kiddie pool, infinity pool. What do you think? Let me know. Consider condos, number three guys, consider condos. While inventory has grown this year, it's still historically low. Adding condos to your search can help you get your foot in the door to help you start building equity. Lastly, number four, expand your search radius. If you need even more options, widening your radius to include nearby neighborhoods or communities could help you find that hidden gem. And condos are more affordable. The cost per month is more affordable if you're a first time home buyer. Don't cross those off your list. I know it's nice to have a yard, but hey, you live in there for a few years, you save some money, you rent it out, you go buy what you really, really want. Okay, so that's it for the market update for October 17th, 2022. Hope everyone's well. Thanks for being here. If you liked this video, go ahead and hit the like button for me. If you're not subscribed and you want to subscribe and you want more content like this, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. If you don't, you're not going to hurt my feelings. I don't get easily offended. All right. Take care. Make sure you guys go vote so we can change some policies coming up in November for our midterms. Hopefully things will get better, but they got to get worse before they get better. So make those changes. And it's really important in your local communities, guys, your school boards, your county commissioners, your local elected officials makes more of an impact in your life than the federal government does. So make sure you're really researching those candidates and go make changes at the local level before you can make changes on a federal level. All right, guys, that's it. We'll see you next time. Take care and have a good one.